expreso mis más sinceras condolencias por la partida de nuestro amigo y hermano Miguel Ángel Carrera Estrella. I express my most sincere condolences for the departure of our brother and friend Miguel Ángel Carrera Estrella. To his parents, Misao Carrera Aguirre and Elvira Estrella Garcia, and his sister Evelyn Alejandra Carrera Estrella, and other relatives, friends and brethren of our brother Miguel Angel Carrera Estrella. On an occasion, In the year 1961, March 5th, in this booklet, titled Beyond the Curtain of Time, our brother Branham tells us here the occasion He spoke to us that he went to the sixth dimension. And he says there, he says, because on that occasion, let us see here, He was at a funeral. And there, they give him the microphone. That is, they leave uh, Brother Neville's the pulpit. And Brother Neville reads the article of the Reverend William Branham titled Beyond the Curtain of Time, which was published on February of that year 61. And it says, The other morning, I was laying on my bed, and I had just awoke from sleep and I placed my hands behind my head and relaxed with my head on the pillow. Then I began to wonder what it will be like on the other side. I realized that I have lived more than half my life. If I live to be as old as my people, and I wanted to do more for the Lord before I left this life, I heard a voice saying, you are just starting. Press the battle. Keep pressing. As I lay there pondering the words, I thought that I just imagined that, that I heard a voice. Again the voice said, Press the battle. Keep going. Keep going. Do you see how beautiful it is to meditate? And to speak with oneself. Think oneself meditating in the promises, in everything that God has promised us, and also of everything that God has delivered us from, and how great and kind He has been with us. Everything we've gone through and all that He has helped us until here, and that from all the dangers that He has delivered us, and that today we are here, standing before the Son of Man, not as we were before, but as people changed in so many aspects, and to see beyond, in other words, meditate in everything that God has promised for His children at this time. Notice, he was in that atmosphere, meditating in all of that, and would say, at this point, half my life has gone by, and 
I like to do something more for the Lord, see? He was in that atmosphere like that, meditating. And he heard, and while doing so, he heard within him, that is something from within. Again, the voice said, press the battle, keep going, keep going. Still unbelieving, I thought that possibly I had spoken the words myself. I placed my lips between my teeth. He did like an mmm. There, he pinched it. And I held my hand over my mouth and listened. The voice spoke again. Just keep pressing if you only knew what is at the end of the road. Notice. If God shows us all that is beyond Notice, he was shown, and this is for our teaching. But notice that the elect of God is based on faith, because if not, there would be no need for faith, because everything would be too easy. And one would look and, all right, wait, let me then, if I know how it's going to be and this and that, know everything that's going to happen in the future. But notice, we know what's, will happen in the future because they are promises of transformation of resurrection to rule in the millennium and eternity. All that's there. But there's something more, let's say, evident that God showed Brother Branham there that this should be a great teaching for us. He says, if you only knew what is at the end of the road, I seem to hear the music and words of an old familiar song I am homesick and blue. I want to see Jesus. I would like to hear those harbor bells chime. It would brighten my path and banish all fears. Lord, let me look past the curtains of time. In other words, he was remembering that hymn. Then the voice asked. This is when one is reminded as when they ask Job, where were you? Remember that occasion? When I found the... Let us search that scripture because it was a question that God made to Job. Let us see here. In Job 38, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Get up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who had laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who had stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Now notice, there it speaks to us in those verses a very great revelation. And notice that where the cornerstone is, the stars which are the children of God, whom are also represented in children of God, are praising, glorifying. And notice how they ask him there. God asked Job. And here, that voice asks Brother Branham. Now notice this question is for Brother Branham to answer him. Because as each person has free will, he could say yes or he could say no. He did not take him like this. Come here, I'm going to place you here. But rather, he asked him there, he says, then the voice asked, would you like to see just beyond the curtain? Now, he was remembering the hymn beyond the curtain of time. And notice how in that dimension there, when he remembered there in his mind, 
how that voice was discerning there the thoughts of Brother Branham. I answered, it would help me so much. What happened, I cannot say. Whether I was in the body or out, or whether it was a translation, I don't know. But it was unlike any vision I have ever had. I could see the place to which I was taken, and I could see myself laying back there upon my bed. I said, This is a strange thing. There were great numbers of people, and they came running to greet me, crying, Oh, our precious brother. First came young woman, apparently in their early twenties. And as they would embrace me, they said, Our precious brother, young man in the brilliance of youth, manhood, with eyes glistering like star on a dark night, with teeth as white as pearls, Embrace me, saying, Our precious brother. Then I noticed that I, too, had become young again. I look at myself there and turn and look back at my old body laying in the bed with my hands behind my head. I said, I don't understand this. As I began to try to comprehend the place where I was, I began to realize that there was no yesterday and no tomorrow there. No one seemed to get tired. As a multitude of the most beautiful young women I have ever seen threw their arms around me, I discovered there was only a great love that overwhelmed me and no physical attraction as in the human behavior. I noticed these young women all wore their hair down to their waistline and their skirts went down to their feet. After this, Hope, my first wife, hugged me and said, My precious brother. Then another young woman hugged me, and Hope turned and hugged the young woman. And I said, I don't understand this. This is something entirely different from our human love. I don't want to go back to that old body on the bed. Then a voice spoke to me. This is what you preached that the Holy Ghost is. This is perfect love. Nothing can enter here without it. Nothing can enter there without perfect love, without the Holy Spirit. Next, I was taken up and seated on a high place. All around me were great numbers of men and women in the bloom of youth. They were crying with joy. Oh, our precious brother, we are so happy to see you here. And I thought, I'm not dreaming, for I can see these people and I can see my body laying back there on the bed. The voice spoke to me. You know, it is written in the Bible that the prophets were gathered with their people. I said, yes, I remember that in the scriptures. But there are not these many Branhams. The voice replied, These are not Branhams. These are your converts, the ones you have led to the Lord. Some of these women, you think they are so young and beautiful, were more than 90 years old when you led them to the Lord. No wonder they are crying out, My precious brother. Then the multitude cried together, If you hadn't gone forth with the gospel, we wouldn't be here. I asked, Oh, where is Jesus? I want to see him. The people replied, He's just a little higher. Someday he will come to you. You were sent as a leader. And when God comes, he will judge you according to your teaching. I ask, Does Paul and Peter have to stand this judgment also? The answer was yes. I said, I have preached what they preached. I did not divert from it to one side or the other. Where they baptized in the name of Jesus, I did too. Where they taught the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I did too. Whatever they taught, I taught also. We know that, the people cried. And we know that we are going to back to earth with you sometime. Jesus will come. In the book of the seals, he says, Moses and Elijah, Revelation 11. 
Jesus will come and judge you according to the word you preached us. Then you will present us to him, and all together will go back to earth to live forever. And I ask, do you have to go back to earth now? They answered, yes, but keep pressing on. As I began to move from that beautiful, joyful place, as far as my eyes could see, people were coming towards me to embrace me, crying, my precious brother. Suddenly, I was back on the bed again. I said, oh God, help me. Never let me compromise with the word. Let me stay straight on the word. I don't care what anyone else does. Lord, let me press on to that beautiful, joyful place. I am more convinced than ever in my life that it will take perfect love to enter that place. There was no jealousy, no tiredness, no sickness, no old age, no death, only supreme beauty and joy. Whatever you do, lay aside everything else until you get perfect love. Get to where you can love everybody, even every enemy, no matter if the plane is rocking, the lightning is flashing, or the guns of the enemy are upon you. These things do not matter. Get perfect love. If you are not saved, accept Jesus Christ. And there he goes on to say, what was carried out in the dispensation of grace. Press on to that perfect love which will take you to that beautiful and joyful place beyond the curtain of time. Which was what in the book of the seals he spoke to us on page 423 where he tells us we are in travail Christ to bring forth the bride everything is travailing and groaning see there is something fixing to happen and this sixth plague seal let her go what is the sixth seal? Revelation 11 Moses and Elijah brother in other words notice what makes way for all that that will come. It is that ministry of Moses and Elijah, the Lord in His coming with His angels. Brother, the earthquakes burst open, and the stars shake, volcanics will come forth, and the earth will renew itself. New lava will break forth from the center of the earth, and she'll crumble all around, around, and around when she spins out in yonder. And I tell you one morning, And he writes in the morning, when Jesus and his bride come back to earth, there will be a paradise of God there, that, oh my, them old warriors of the battle, walk down through there with their friends and loved ones. The anthems will fill the air of an angelic host. Oh, it was well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord that's been prepared for you like you should have had back there before Eve started the ball a rolling in sin. Amen. Woo. Yeah. Six seal is going to do something. Yes, sir. Truly, the whole world is groaning and paining for the millennium age. Now notice how all of that is what would be carried out in and through the ministries of Moses and Elijah, which is going to bring forth all those promises, both blessings for the church bride to be ready, prepared, for when the resurrection occurs to be transformed, and for the world also, which will know that the end of time has already come, the end of the world systems, where there is no hope, there is no opportunity. In other words, all of mankind, all the groups, the bride, the foolish virgins, the lost, the 144,000, are being impacted. And that impact 
is increasing. The impact towards all those groups is increasing as God is fulfilling all that pertains to the seventh seal. The sixth seal, which is the coming of the Lord with his angels. Because notice, what the seventh trumpet is for Israel, which is Moses and Elijah, notice, the sixth seal is the seventh seal, the coming of the Lord for the church bride. Now notice, on page 428, 428, it says, For we realize we have just a short time, and the church might go at any time. The Lamb might at any time leave the sanctuary up there, or the throne of sacrifice, come forth from the throne of God where the sacrifice lays, and it is over. There is no more hope for the world. She is finished. Then she goes into fluctuations of great spasms of earthquakes and great shakings like it was at the resurrection. As Christ rose from the grave, when the saints rise, the same thing will take place. And there in that group, our friend and brother, Miguel Angel Carrera Estrellas, will return. And it will be what? A glad day. He says, Lord, it could be at any minute. We're watching for that glad day to arrive. Because even though the world will be with all those violent constructions and tremendous shakings, as it happened in the resurrection of the saints and of Jesus back in his first coming, that day of joy, which in this end time will also be repeated, because they will return while the world is with all those convulsions and labor pains we will be anxiously waiting for that day of joy why day of joy? because they are going to return all those who have departed that God called them to make up the group and complete the group there in the sixth dimension they are going to return again and that day will be so and so Joyful, because notice, you there are sad because your son left. And from his sister, then her little brother left. And his grandparents and his friends, his friends at work who miss him now. But notice, what a glorious hope that in this end time, there will come a day of joy. This day, for many, is a day of sadness because a family member is gone. We are human. We feel and we get sad. Like when my dad left. Like when our brother William left. See, people who we love or a family member we also loved left. And notice, some people from here has also left who spend time with us. And speaking of my on my behalf, I shared with them and it filled me with sadness and I understand you. I understand your sadness completely. But notice, we have such a great hope and it is that there will come a day of joy and your sadness will turn into joy. And there is the hope that the Apostle Paul spoke and said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 and on. He says, Take comfort on these words. Because the promises that God has made for His children are words of comfort. So, this earthly life, when it ends to a person, is not all of it. This is not the end for Miguel Ángel Carrera Estrella. No. This rather is a time that ended while he was in this earthly body. He will return with an eternal and glorified body to live for all eternity, to be in the marriage supper of the Lamb, to be in the millennium and eternity. Do you see why these are words of comfort? And why the second coming of the Lord, of which Jesus did not read in chapter 61, that he stopped there on the second verse, and to preach the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all them that mourn because he brings words of comfort. 
and he is telling you that that day of joy will come very soon, where we will see all our departed loved ones again. So, relatives, his parents, his siblings, and all the relatives, brothers in Christ and brothers also, relatives of all of the family on the father's and mother's side, and all the friends present there. May these words be of comfort for you, aware that soon we will see Miguel Ángel Carrera Estrella again. May God bless you, may God keep you. And today, Saturday, September 21st of this year 2024, may peace and love and hope rest upon you, aware that we will see again our brother, Miguel Ángel. And as he said there, This would help me a whole lot. That is, by showing Brother Branham everything that was behind the curtain of time. That is, the subject that I just read to you may it have been of help and comfort and of hope aware that he's over there, looking over here, happy, enjoying the blessings contained there. May God bless you and keep you. And may you all have a day of peace, love, and calmness in your hearts. Until the time comes when that day of joy, of rejoicing, of happiness arrives. May God bless you and keep you. And I join you in this moment of pain. But aware that we are looking beyond the curtain of time. In all this that our brother Branham told us. And we thank God for all that God allowed him to see. And that he left it there for our teaching. Knowing that there is a hope for all the sons and daughters of God. May God bless you and keep you all.